Hey guys, welcome back to Stuff and Things for your daily dose of nerd news. On today's episode, there's some new data on whether you should actually be taking the pill or not. So first up, unless you like having little squirming balls of flesh waking you up at all hours of the night, you're gonna take a little extra precaution when you go have your sexy time or whatever words you use for it. Turns out couples may want to think about their strategies in regards to how to protect themselves as taking the pill might actually increase your risk of getting glaucoma. It's not good because you're blind. A study from Duke University of California and the Nung Chung University over in China, obviously, reviewed data on 3,406 US women and found that those who had taken the pill, any brand didn't matter, um, over a three year period, were twice as likely to be diagnosed with glaucoma. Glaucoma is the leading cause of blindness, so it's definitely something you need to consider. This does actually link to what previous studies that looked at linking estrogen to the same thing. So it seems to just increase the hormones, ends up causing that, possibly. Well, it's just over prolonged periods. What I say is that that pill that kills your sperm cannot come fast enough. Moving along, portable devices like smartphones, tablets, even, I guess, laptops that people still use those nowadays, are pretty much here to stay. It's, they're part of our lives. They're part of our culture, even. But something holding them back from being, well, even more than what they are, is power. Uh, the ability to actually run the devices has always been limited by battery technology. It's always behind in our increasing need for more power. We gotta get the cool big screens with the fancy cameras. It takes a lot of juice. Some new tech from Stanford might come to save the day. Researchers from there have developed a nanocarbon polymer that binds to the electrode sites of the batteries themselves, which apparently will naturally fit, fill in these little cracks that appear when the device is charged and discharged. Apparently, through the repeated process of it, you get little cracks that reduce the efficiency and eventually make the battery kind of worthless. This would actually take on similar properties to what our own bodies do when we get cut. It will actually fix the cracks and fill in and make it work as good as new. Which is amazing because, like I said, battery life will be jumped up significantly and you won't have to worry about that crap anymore. And also, you look at a little bigger picture, this does overlay the way to uh, increase the use of battery-powered vehicles. Battery technology, again, is the big stumbling block there. We can make fairly efficient electric motors and all of that jazz, but batteries still suck compared to all the other ways you can contain energy in a transportable medium, like gasoline or even hydrogen. This old technology is unfortunately still in the lab, but hey, who knows, maybe some investor from Samsung or from Ford or GM or something will come along, pick this up and, you know, actually get stuff move along. Or the bury it. That's an option too, because that happens a lot. But guys, that's going to be it for me today. What I want to know from you is, does the battery life of a phone actually affect you? Or are you guys just upgrading your cell phone so quickly that it doesn't even start to become a problem? I'd really love to know that. Let me know in the comments down below what's going on with you. And of course, if you like what you see, do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button, wherever that happen to be. And we'll check in the next video.